Hi, I'm Dennis Wilson. At Delta Dental of New Jersey, we're committed to educating the public about the importance of good oral health and its role in our overall health and well-being. That's why we're proud to support the important healthcare programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Delta Dental of New Jersey. Everyone deserves a healthy smile. The New Jersey Education Association. Wells Fargo. New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation. The law firm of Gibbons PC. Verizon. And by NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Turn a dream into a degree. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You've got this? Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to, uh, this is one on two, this segment. It is my pleasure <laughs> to introduce two very special guests. We're going to talk about something really important. Uh, Sheila Rustiak, Vice President, HR, Total Rewards and Talent Management, PSEG, and also Anna Pianzo Cotton, who is Vice President of Workforce Development and Lifelong Learning at Rowan College at Burlington County. Good to have you both with us. Thanks for having us. Uh, Thank Sheila, you so much. this is a, uh, we're here to talk about a program called Wise Pathways, yes. which is? Women in Sustainable Employment. And so think of it as a 40 hour workshop designed to really build a bridge between qualified women seeking employment right. and industries that include energy, gas, electric, water and the construction trades with in-demand jobs looking for that talented pipeline of, of diverse talent. These are non-traditional employment situations, right? Absolutely. What does that mean? Describe it. Well, typically we understand that to mean areas where women or whatever the target population is underrepresented. So the percentage of women working in these areas um, is, is small in some cases, less than 1% of the total workforce. And so the Department we, of Labor kind of says anything less than 25%. So let's mm -hmm. go through some of them. Yeah. Okay, like? So um, pipe fitters. Pipe fitters. Welders. Welders. Plan operators. Technicians. These jobs can pay really great wages. Absolutely. But historically, women have not had access. It's not so much that they haven't had access. Kind of the starting point is building awareness. What does that mean? And so this starts from, you know, we, we say you think of workforce development starts in, in kindergarten. And, and that's where we need to target uh, the, the diverse talent and really guide folks, make all people aware of the good paying jobs that have real strong career paths in industries that they may not traditionally have thought were appropriate. You know what's so interesting here is this is a partnership, right? It's Absolutely. a public private partnership. And we were actually in a conversation with the foundation folks at your organization. Yes. And they were talking about this, and, 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 and they were saying, well, there's a partnership, a collaboration. I go, well, who's the collaboration with? And you folks came up. So explain the collaboration with Rowan College. And it's even broader than Rowan College, I'll start by saying. The collaboration started through a conversation with, uh, between folks at the American Job Center, which is under the... Um, under the oversight of the Workforce Development Board okay. at the county and the Human Services Department at the time. We were talking to PSC In Burlington County? In Burlington County. So that's South Jersey for South folks Jersey, who may not wear, uh, be aware of that. Burlington ahead. County. And, um, and, and so our, our, as part of the kind of general workforce planning, that group of folks, myself included, met with folks from PSC and g to discuss ways that we could help them uh, with some of their hiring needs and also planning for some education and some talent development work at the college. So it was really a partnership across institutions, including uh, the work for, throughout the workforce system at the county. But also, let's make it clear, in terms of expanding the partnership, there are other corporations involved as well. Exactly. Right? Yeah. American, American Water. American Water, um, ACE, Atlantic City Electric, 
Um, we have uh, Sisters in the Brotherhood as, as another industry organization and, and construction representatives. Is, is it fair to say, Sheila, that the more organizations, the more private sector companies involved, the more potential opportunities for employment? Absolutely. This is an industry industry solution that we just are okay. implementing at the regional level. We're hiring. You know, speaking from, from PSEG standpoint, you right. know, our customers are demanding resiliency. So we're sure. making New Jersey energy strong. So when the extreme weather hits, uh, you know, you can depend on, on the lights and, and heat to be on. And so we've got significant hiring going on and we look to our local partners for what we want to hire locally. We want that sure. diverse talent and, and we want folks with the skills ready to join. Well, let's talk about skills. Let's talk about the curriculum itself. Because okay. I'm looking at the curriculum and it's intense. Yeah. Let's break it down. What actually is being taught? So some, a lot of it is just career awareness. It begins with exposure to folks who have worked in the industry. There's a math primer, math prep. Um, there's some fundamental mathematics skills that are necessary for, for all folks involved and many folks need some brush ups with that. Um, a, a good amount of it is just understanding workplace dynamics, learning learning some of the, the tools and what they'll have to learn on the job. So what about interviewing skills? Interviewing skills, resume, there's a resume workshop. A um, resume workshop. Resume workshop. So whether you have a very well developed strong resume or are just, you know, have pieces or just beginning to think about what your resume would look like. All of the participants had a chance to sit down with someone and walk through. And Sean, you and I have had so many conversations about HR, the people part of things. Absolutely. Um, talk about that. The, the part of the curriculum that deals with the communication, uh, the people part of it. Yeah, so Anna mentioned um, the, the career awareness portion um, is really bringing to life the people today that, that serve in lead roles that we're talking about. So we will bring, uh, along with the partner um, partners from industry that were part of this program, we will bring our role models, women who are successful and have navigated the waters and, and are doing well in these careers to come and talk about their real life experience. Mentors? Absolutely. Why is that so important? It's critical. You need to be able to see yourself having the ability to, to do these type of jobs. And it's one thing for human resources to come talk about the opportunity and the culture of, of working in our industry. Um, nothing beats those that have done it successfully and, and sharing their stories. Talk, talking about stories, what have you gotten back and from some of the students who have participated? What kind of feedback? Well, we've, we've heard just positive feedback in general. Folks have have said they learned so much about how their, exist, their prior skills or things they didn't think were relevant could be translated into this industry. That was an important part of the resume workshop as well, was just walking through what experience would 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 be would be relevant to, to this to this industry and um, and helping folks just have confidence in themselves. They said developing a network of peers just within the cohort of the class. They mm -hmm. you know they they found folks they could relate to, they could rely on for support. So beyond the mentors, they also had the the they've maintained contact with among themselves within the group of participants. And feedback from the employers? It's been great. So we send our recruiters out to the program. So in addition to the hiring managers, our, our direct recruiters. So we've built those relationships. We're helping folks navigate um, all the pre-employment testing and, and application process. And again, it's, it's as much as we want them to come work for PSCG, we're just as thrilled when they, they work for another industry in the state. That's our, that's our goal. So, so a question, before I let you out here, why shouldn't this, why couldn't this be a model moving forward, expand it to other schools, other companies? creating more opportunities for women, like why not? Well, absolutely. We're looking at this is one of um, several industry boot camp models, as we, we refer to industry it. Industry boot camps. Industry yeah. boot camps. Like so this is exposure to the energy utility industry um, for and construction industry for 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 women. But we're looking at industry boot camps and information technology for for young adults, for women, for um, you know for for returning military as well. We're partnering with various various pipeline organizations and that was another important component of this program was having the relationships with folks who are working with individuals who are looking for jobs who are going through um, in some cases transitional housing programs and and mm. looking for a life change overall and and being able to connect those organizations with the employers and with the trainers through the network that Finally was established. Finally creating opportunities. Absolutely. So it's about. It is. Absolutely. It is. It's important stuff. Um, Sheila and Anna, I want to thank you so much for talking about the whys, 
pathway programs again uh, again and one more time Sheila why stands for women in sustainable employment we've got another pilot uh, kicking off at the end of February so there's there's still time for those interested in, in becoming part of our, our next program to to get involved log on and find out more information thank you so much we appreciate it thank you See, thank every time you. once in a while we do one on two it's worth it it's valuable mm -hmm. appreciate it thank stay you. with us we'll be right back right after this Thank you very much. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We are pleased to be joined by Randy Wallach, who is the co-advisor of uh, the TEDx Youth Club at Lawton C. Johnson Summit Middle School in Summit, New Jersey. Um, we're about to show a clip from the classroom close-up series about these uh, TEDx Youth Club operation. Describe, what is it? Um, well, for the past four years, we've had sanctioned TED Talks in our school where we By have... By the way, for those who don't know what TED Talks uh, are all about, TED Talk I don't would want to be, assume. Okay, absolutely. It's uh, on a national stage. They get some of the greatest minds, innovators, inventors. They bring them together, give them a 20-minute platform, and then they do these subgroups. So those yeah. would be the TEDx youth, or the TEDx groups, and then within that, there's TEDx How could youth. kids do this? Watch the clip. No they way! Do an amazing are talk. you saying kids are involved in this? Very prestigious TED Talks they, operation. In our school, they run every single aspect. Does the of classroom close-up video prove it? It certainly does. Well, let's find out. All let's right. take a look at classroom close-up and all about TED Talks with kids. Perfection. Perfection is one of the most complex terms in existence. It is only an idea and a false one at that because it this can is be Lily. She's a seventh grader, and she's not reading cue cards or a teleprompter. The story she is telling is more like a talk. In fact, it's a TEDx youth talk. So can you talk about your conclusion a little bit so everyone can get... Randy Wallach and Janice Cavanaugh are co-advisors for the TEDx Youth After School Club here at Lawton C. Johnson Summit Middle School. TEDx is entirely student-driven. We have auditions. We take 10 students who present um, actual TED Talks. And then we have about eight other students that produce every other angle of the, uh, the production. TEDx Youth is part of the nonprofit organization TED, which is devoted to spreading ideas through short, powerful talks. TED began in 1984 as a conference where technology, entertainment, and design converged, and today covers almost all topics and global issues. This year's theme is, I have a question. What is perfection? Who are we? Do I see what you see? Whether a universal language is good or not, they come to us with these different ideas, and it, it's, it's not working with a 12 or 13 year old. They are equal, and as the year progresses and they become experts in whatever they're learning, they know more than we do. It's actually taught me a lot about myself. I've learned how to kind of motivate myself and just decide to work and not to procrastinate because you are given that decision all the time. Tonight, I would like to share my knowledge with all of you of how to become self-motivated. There's an air of confidence. The ones that know they did it, it is, it is a badge to them. Everything that you will see, hear, and eat tonight is at the hand of the producers. The start of an official universal language was slowly make the beautiful variety of our world vanish. We have 12 and 13 year old kids. They sound like NPR reporters. I no longer care if one line isn't perfectly straight or if I get a six out of 10 on my English reading quiz because I am never going to achieve perfection. Once we see them up there, and especially they're comfortable and they're relaxed, um, it, it's incredible. We're taught an abundance of subjects in school, but none of them are focusing on how to thrive when interacting with different people. I love it. It's the smartest two hours of my week. In everyday issues, people feel so strong about their cause in a controversial topic that they fail to recognize how other people feel. It's what, in some utopian society that may never exist, education should be. Work hard, dream big, be open-minded, be happy, and most importantly, be kind. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Well, I'll tell you, um, that's amazing. And uh, as someone who's taught and, 
and coaches and writes about yeah. communication and presentation. I'm blown away by uh, what I just saw. So for these young people yeah. involved in this extraordinary journey, this process, this challenge, what do they take away from it? Um, I think they gain quite a bit of confidence. I think they learn how to work through uh, not being perfect. A lot of times these are the kids that get 97s and 98s and always do incredibly well on tests and everything's very easy. And I think for a lot of them it's the first time they hit that wall. It's the first time they can't do something mm. uh, repeatedly. I think it gives them a sense of humility mm. and when they finish it a tremendous sense of accomplishment. You know, it is so interesting because so many adults in, in professional life, any walk of life, it is the ability or the inability to get up, yes. present, connect, engage, persuade, where they fail, they falter, mm -hmm. they stammer, they just can't connect. What you're doing for these young people is giving them a skill set and the confidence for a lifetime. And it's pretty amazing what they walk away with. It's incredible how well they adapt to the program and the standards and every year increase our expectations. So it's, it's an incredible Who are the kids? Do, do they self-select? Uh, we do auditions. Every year there are, this year we selected 15 and 10 will present. Uh, they'll find out who's presenting in the next couple of weeks. Why did you decide to become a teacher? I was a terrible student. <laughs> Get out of here. I was, I was a terrible middle school student. I had an awful middle school experience. I, uh, I just couldn't find anything that clicked. Um, so as I got older and I began to love education, I sort of found out that a lot of it had to do with teachers. And the ones that I did meet along the way who had an impact had a profound impact. So um, my grandfather was a teacher, my mother was a teacher, and at some point I realized that I think it was a little bit in my blood and just sort of destined for me to follow in their footsteps. So for you, when you see these young people get up and do what they do under this pressure, and, and they have to then do it, yes. I mean they can practice, but I, we've also seen a lot of people practice and then you know, you'll Absolutely. see it in the Super Bowl. We, we're, sure. we're taping after the Super Bowl. You see people do really well in practice, and then, you know, you see people practice, these young people practice, and what happens sometimes if they don't perform when the time comes? Uh, well, the whole goal is for it to be a talk. So we, yes. always, we always discuss the idea of having tethers instead of a memorized speech. So it's speech. not a performance? No. So make it clear to people. Yes. Not a performance. A talk, a, a talk. conversation. Exactly. Which psychologically and emotionally, for those of us who are in this field, makes all the difference in the world. Explain yes. that to folks. Well, I think instead of the best of them are not memorized speeches. That's right. Many That's of the danger. Yes. You get stuck, you're dead. Exactly. Go ahead, explain it. So many of them still will rely on that, but the best that we've seen are the ones where the kids become so familiar with the content mm. that they give something that's unique every single time they do it. And their 99th time doing it is different than their 100th, which mm. is different than the one they present to people. And those are the ones that are most comfortable and engaging. It's a conversation. It is a it's conversation. It's a talk. Exactly. Which is by far the best way to connect and communicate. Yes. Well, you are, you are really helping these young people in so many ways. Mm. It's trying. a powerful tool, and, and we wish more folks would be doing this. Uh, Randy Wallach, who is over at the uh, Lawton C. Johnson Summit Middle School in Summit. I want to thank you for doing what you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, when I heard they're doing TED Talks for kids, I go, no way. Mm -hmm. And now you just proved it. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank Great. you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll be right back right after this. Great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We're honored to have Dr. Anthony Costa, who is an orthopedic surgeon, uh, Meridian Orthopedics, and also medical director of Total Joint Center at Riverview Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you for having me, Steve. Um, let's talk a little bit about Osteoarthritis, what is it? Osteoarthritis, uh, the quote regular arthritis, if people talk about uh, having arthritis, this is the one that they're talking about typically. Mm. There's over 180 subtypes of, of different arthritis. No. Yeah, there's a lot. 
uh, but the the uh, most prominent is osteoarthritis. That's the one that affects uh, most genetic? people. There is a genetic uh, predisposition. We haven't figured that out as well yet, there, but we know that there's a, it's a multifactorial mm -hmm. problem. Uh, but yes, you can blame mom and dad a little bit because uh, there is a genetic... I could blame my parents for that too? Please do. Good, I got a long list here. No, I'm like, <laughs> like kidding. Let, let's do this because there's rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis. What's the yeah. difference? Rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic problem, meaning that it's an autoimmune, there's an autoimmune uh, factor to it where your body is attacking its own joint, uh, whereas the osteoarthritis is, there is a wear and tear t uh, uh, portion where, y you know, your, your weight and your activity affect the uh, osteoarthritis significantly. Uh, not, in, not where you would have uh, right. your body attacking itself, but rather the external forces, uh, environmental forces uh, weigh in hard. Let's talk about some of the options because there are apparently... Uh, all the information is that there are more options today than ever before if you have osteoarthritis. Let's talk about them. Osteoarthritis. What are some of the, uh, are the well, options? Well, the, the beginning, I mean, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and uh, yes, I, ultimately you will get to the point where you may need to have the, the joint replaced. But you do try to avoid that. Yes. Yeah. How? Yeah. Uh, multiple multiple ways. Once we figure out through uh, you know the X-rays and your physical examination and your history, where do you lie on the spectrum? Do you have mild arthritis? Do you have moderate arthritis? Are you way over here uh, in the severe arthritic range? If you're in the mild or moderate, there are um, many non-operative treatments. Um, diet and exercise always. You know, losing weight. What does it do? What does that have to do with it? Because if you're if you're doing, we studies show that low impact aerobic activity is actually better for patients with arthritis. Now you would think that, well, it's wear and tear, but how would exercising it be good for it? And it turns out that my, my most happy patients are the patients that get up uh, and, and exercise on a near daily basis. So let's, clear, let's clarify this. Um, we use terms, low impact, I don't want to assume. I do um, stair stepper, elliptical. My wife is constantly on the treadmill and I avoid the treadmill uh, she is younger. M part of my logic is that the pounding on the treadmill bothers my knees. A am I wrong? No, you're not. I mean, the, the, in the, the exercise that you named, that uh, elliptical machine and, uh, is, is going to be less impact than walking on a treadmill. But the treadmill, if it, you know, what you were saying is, is exactly right. Try it. See how yeah. it makes you feel. The higher impact uh, uh, exercises are more like jogging. Uh, Especially out on the street. Right. Basketball, those type of jumping type of things. Okay, let's talk uh, hip replacement, knee replacement, improvements. What are they? Um, well, by the way, let's give guys give me a shot of this. Steve, you have a shot? Steve Barcy? Talk about what are we looking at here? Well, this is, this is a knee prior to, prior to, you know, a healthy knee. This you know, is a healthy this knee. This is a healthy knee. So we have, you know, thigh bone, leg bone, and then the kneecap. Got it. The, when patients think of arthritis, a lot of times they think oh, that I have a problem with my bone, and that really isn't the, the, the primary problem. The, prob the problem is the, the uh, cap of the bone, which is called the cartilage. The cartilage wears away, that's what causes an irregular bone surface on bone. here, and then eventually you get bone on bone, exactly right. Once, uh, when you go through all the conservative measures, you're not able to get relief and you're functionally limited, you can't pick up your grandkids, you can't do the things that you wish to do, eventually you get to the point where that cartilage cap has worn away so badly that injections aren't helping, Advil's not helping, none of these things are helping, you need a knee replacement. People think that it's replacing the entire knee when really I just need to replace that cartilage surface. Is that when you're moving here? Yes. Let's move over here, guys, take a shot. So instead, uh, knee replacement meaning cut here, cut here, remove and replace. It's more of a resurfacing. So if I turn this to the side, you'll notice this little, there's a, a thin coating. That's all that is removed during the knee replacement in order to get, let's see if we can pull that off here. Oh, so that's interesting. You're not replacing as much as you previously Correct. did. Correct. Well, we're, the, the replacement amounts are about the same, however, we're not removing big parts of bone here. We're just taking, it's more like capping a tooth. If you have a cavity, you mm. take out the cavity, you leave as much tooth as you can. Same concept here. We're removing just the end, the cap goes on, on the bottom part, the cap goes on, and plastic goes in between. What's that, the advantage here? That plastic used to last about 10, maybe 15 years. So people think, oh, I'm, I don't want to 
have a knee replacement. I'm going to outlive this thing. I'm going to have to go back into the operating room in mm -hmm. 10, 15 years. That's really not the case anymore. Since 1997, the plastics in, uh, increased in the quality uh, significantly. So now we're thinking more like 20, 25, you possibly get, 30 you years. Get, you use it longer. Real quick, before I let you out, the, the, uh, Jen, help me on this, the, the hip. The anterior approach to the hip. Oh, an, real quick on that. Anterior approach. Uh, there's many ways to access the hip. You can you can have an incision by your butt, kind of way right. in the back there. You can have it on the side and in the front. By through experience, I mean we've uh, generally speaking, the conventional way to do it is through the back. Uh, I now I come in through the front. This is not a new thing. It's something that I, that I embrace because I think that the patients get up faster. Why? The incisions are on the three inch mark. Uh, I'm cutting less uh, to access that joint space. By cutting less and, and having the soft tissues managed better, the patients are getting up a little bit Recovery faster. Recovery faster? Yes, sir. The, the data is the first, the first few weeks, we, we think that it, there's, there's evidence that say, yes, people are getting up and moving faster. After that six week mark, really everything kind of melds together and, and everybody does well uh, ultimately. But it's my goal to, to get patients up immediately after surgery, and that's what they do. We have the surgeries on day on Friday, you're up walking on Friday. Get what? Yeah, same day surgery. Amazing changes. It's happening. Uh, Dr. Anthony Costa, involved in some really important work that is impacting a lot of people, orthopedic surgeon, Meridian Orthopedics, uh, medical director, Total Joint Center at Riverview Medical Center. I want to thank you for uh, talking to us. A lot of people out there dealing with hip and knee and other orthopedic issues. We appreciate it. Good stuff. My pleasure, Steve. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Delta Dental of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, New Jersey Sharing Network, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Verizon, and by NJ Best. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Hi, I'm Dennis Wilson, president and CEO of Delta Dental of New Jersey. You probably know that visiting your dentist and daily at-home care are necessary for maintaining good oral health. What you might not know is that your oral health is connected to your overall health. Oral health may impact conditions like diabetes, blood disorders, and heart disease. Regular cleanings and checkups allow your dentist to assess your risk and keep you and your smile healthy.